Hi everyone and welcome back to the happy heart. I am so glad that you guys came over today to see another homeschool video. In this homeschool video, I really wanted to answer all those W questions. All those ones that we wonder about people because we're curious. So all the who, what, where, when, why, how, all that stuff. I wanted to kind of answer those particular questions and give you guys some insight about my daily life and what I do homeschooling. Uh, I know that everybody's house looks different and everybody's reasons are different, but I am always ridiculously curious about why people do things the way they do them. And homeschool included, and I felt so strongly that I really wanted to add to the community of homeschool videos out there. I really wanted to give some kind of a calmness or a peace that somebody might need because I have had that happen many different times. Even in the beginning of this homeschool year, I was so concerned about my scheduling and I went back and watched some videos of one of my favorite YouTubers and it gave me some really good advice um, about kind of moving forward. So I wanted to add to that uh, community of videos. So I am going to explain to you guys all my all my W questions and let you know um, the ins and outs of why I do what I do. So first of all, who? Who do I homeschool? I homeschool my nine-year-old son. He is in fourth grade this year, and we have homeschooled every year except for first grade. And. I get tons of questions all the time about why do you only homeschool if you have one child? And it just boggles my mind that people would really even ask that because I'm like, no, that's not what it's about. <laughs> so I really, um, I'm totally not an expert. I don't have, you know, seven, eight kids that I'm homeschooling or anything like that. But I can say that I have really enjoyed and my, it's, been really good for my family to homeschool my one child. So my child um, has done phenomenal at homeschool and uh, he is in fourth grade this year. As far as the what goes, we use um, a couple different types of curriculum. Uh, this year we use the good and the beautiful and we use um, ace paces curriculum and I was not sure about the ace um, system because you I just saw such very nerves on it and I was like I don't know but I think it really depends on your child and how they learn and if that kind of style of it's more of like a workbook style and if that kind of style works for them I really did it this year for math and Bible because Bible first of all the curriculum was really cheap and we already did our own quiet time so this was just kind of some theology on top of it and it's okay. Um, I wish it wasn't the King James Version because I think it would be a little bit easier for young children to understand. But I feel like uh, he does get something out of it, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, the math has been really, really good. And I know there's a lot of controversy on the math because a lot of times people have a hard time because there's a lot of problems to a page if you're doing three or four pages in a workbook it's like oh you know and it takes forever and so we've had days where it's it's been harder but all in all it's actually been a really good experience I did it just to get kind of caught up because we had moved at the end of last year and I noticed that the last month of uh third grade, I don't know if he was retaining a lot of information. So I thought, you know what, I really want to do this and what's the cheapest alternative that I can do. And that was a cheap alternative. I did watch, um, I do watch Andrea Mills channel and she um, homeschools all her kids with the ACE curriculum. And I just thought, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to try it out. If it doesn't work, we'll do something else. And I think that's really the best attitude to have as a homeschool mom. You're not always gonna figure it out the first time, but as long as you solve the problem, then that's all that's about. So that is what we were using for those two. Uh, I am using the good and the beautiful for history, language arts, and I am loving 
their history and language arts. Uh, their language arts in particular is amazing because it encompasses writing, spelling, grammar. Um, it's just, it encompasses this whole big thing where I don't have to have a separate spell, spelling curriculum. I don't have to have a separate writing curriculum. And that has been amazing. We are also using their science and it's not really a science for fourth grade. It's more of like right now we're doing a human body um, kind of curriculum and then once we get done with that we'll go on to space. They have a whole bunch of these different ones so you're kind of learning one thing in science and I wasn't sure about it but I actually really really like it. There is something to it. So that is what I'm using this year and I really love it. In the past I used a Becca and a Becca served us wonderful. It was really good and I think I got exactly what I wanted to get out of Becca and I'll tell you why. When my son was in kindergarten I was putting him in school in um, Tennessee where we lived. You had to um, be under an umbrella of a school and it was easier almost to be under a private school and umbrella and so I basically contacted a private school, um, enrolled in their homeschool program which basically was like filling out an application and giving them $60. They did nothing else. They didn't care. and. I was, didn't care either, it worked, it was great. But you could go and ask questions and things like that. So on the phone, I did ask, you know, what, um, you know, what is the best curriculum? Because I'm thinking they're a school, so they could just tell me like an easy, straight answer. I had no idea that there was so many varied curriculums out there. And they said that they used a Becca at this particular school and they said the phonics was really good and that it's tried and true been around for 30 something years. At the time, that was great for me. I really, really wanted my son to be a good reader and I thought if you can read and you can write, then you can pretty much do anything. I really wanted him to read well. I wanted him to understand phonics well and that was really important to me and a Becca really gives you that. So I know lots of people they do um, tons of different things but I think you have to look at your goals and what curriculum really works best with your goals. Where do we homeschool? I have done a multitude of different things. Most of the time we homeschool at our kitchen table. And honestly, it's awesome. We homeschool at our kitchen table, we eat dinner there. Like this table is wonderful. And I love the fact that we're just sitting next to each other, you know, learning, talking, and it's great. It's like where our family always comes together. And I loved the idea of that. Now I have had a homeschool room in my house and that was okay. I think for different situations that would have worked better. For me at the time it was okay. Um, I really just wanted a place to put everything more or less and then I ended up having him homeschool in there because it was just an extra room in my house. And it was good and bad. It kept the mess off of my kitchen table, my dining room table. It kept the mess away which was awesome but I felt like it just moved the mess to a different place in my house. So I would just be like closing the door all the time. I'm like, oh. But I could see where if you had more than one child or something like that, that it would be really, really good. I have honestly figured out that if I can find a place to store and organize my homeschool stuff, then it's not a problem really where I do it. But most of the time it is just right at our kitchen table, no big deal. This is a huge question, huge question. Why do you homeschool? People ask me this all the time because I think frankly like it just is something different and they're not sure if it's good. Like are you good different or are you bad different? And I think they worry about like, are you messing your child up or, uh, I genuinely think people are curious on this issue. 
of why people homeschool, but I, I honestly think a lot of times it's to pass judgment, so you have to be prepared to really like make your argument for it. What really got us started into homeschool was honestly safety. It sounds ridiculous, but safety was the biggest thing. Safety and time. I was so tired of never seeing my child. I was going to work and I loved my job and I was letting him stay up like super late on Friday nights like just snuggling and watching movies with him because I just missed him. I just didn't feel like I was getting enough time and I just thought this time is something that is fleeting. You're never going to get it back. He's never going to be five or six or four again. And you have to take in all the moments and all the memories. And I really was just feeling that. I was like, what do I do? So this was our logical answer. If I could stay home with him, adjust our budget, and that was really hard to get used to, guys. Super hard to go from dual income down to one income. Oh my gosh. Ridiculous. Um, it took me a couple of years, to be honest. And now, no problem. It's, it's like clockwork like it's no big deal but it took me a while so if you're in this situation just you know I wish there's a lot of little things I wish people just put out there so you just know you know the other reason was safety um I remember being at work when my kid was like three I think three or four and Sandy Hook was happening and now we have all these lockdowns and things like that and not that the world is unsafe. Not that in my house it's any less safe, but I can control to a point this environment that I have created. When he leaves my house, I can't protect him anymore. And you kind of have to think of it as like, if somebody gave you a plant, you have this gift of a plant, you're like, okay, all right, this is good. Um, it really needs sunlight. Um, so I'm gonna put it in the window but you know oh like I'm gonna put it outside and forget about it no like I'm gonna shield that plant I'm not gonna let rain get on it I'm not gonna set it outside in the blazing hot Sun I'm gonna make sure I bring it inside I'm gonna water it I'm gonna take care of it and I feel like he's my gift he's something I w I honestly think that I wasn't supposed to have but by the grace of God alone, and that's a whole nother video, I got him. And I get to have this little bit of time with him while we're here on the planet. And, you know, my job is to protect him and feel comfortable sending him off and having a stranger protect him. And that was just me. And I know that's like super controversial. I have tons of friends that are public school teachers who would die to make sure their kids are okay. And I think that is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. But I didn't want to put my child in a situation that I thought could potentially be dangerous. And I was seeing this rise in school shootings, even in high school, even in all this stuff, in little elementary schools. And I just thought, this, it won't work for my family. It, it just won't and and I think you have to go on your gut with these things and because my husband travels it allowed me to stay home so it's kind of like six of one half a dozen of the other um, it was it's not the best scenario but it's what I have to work with and I feel like my job is to protect my child and give him the best education that I can and in the scenario that I was given, this is the best of what I could give him. So I think really you have to look at what your scenario is. This is just me and my family and my why. Everybody's gonna have a different why. How, how is a huge question. How do you homeschool? People ask me this all the time, like it's some impossible feat. And honestly, it might be impossible for some people and I can definitely see that because we have hard days let me tell you there are so many days that uh, I'm tired 
I would rather not do it. Um, my son is tired, he doesn't want to do it. Um, you know, there, and really like to have your child be like, I really don't want to do that. I mean, he would never tell his teacher that, but he would tell me that. And so you have to deal with all of those things. So it's really more like patience. It's more discipline on saying like, we are doing school this day, regardless of what, if everybody else is in school, we are following our own schedule. And I think you have to just be a little bit more um, structured and just patience and grace. Give yourself grace. Do not hold yourself to such a standard that you will never meet up to it. Give yourself a standard of grace. And really, everything that they need to know and that they need to learn, you will get done. You will absolutely get done. The how for me is mostly we tend to start with um, what he wants to do first and that kind of works for me. I'll just say, do you want to do this first? And usually he wants to do math and Bible first and get it out of the way. And then I will sit with him and I will do um, history. I will do science. We'll do language arts together. And um, anything else that we throw in because we do like nature. We do, um, he does handwriting. So a lot of things aren't done on a daily basis and we throw those in here and there as well. But most of it is just lots and lots of patience. Socialization. Oh my goodness. People ask me about this all the time. Aren't you afraid that your child is not going to be socialized? Well, how, to, how does he socialize with other children? Hmm. I really, I hate, hate the fact that society has put this at the top of the list. That this is so important um, is beyond me. And the research that I have done concludes in the fact that you learn your socialization skills from your parents. So how you socialize with people, you're learning by looking at your direct parent, whoever is raising you and things like that. And looking back at my, in my head, I do lots of things because my mom did it. Um, and I do, I don't do lots of things because she didn't do it. Um, I remember not knowing really how to like entertain in my home. I really had to like learn how to do that because my mom didn't entertain. So I didn't see her you know, people come in and say, oh, would you like a drink? Come and sit down. Like that's so foreign to me because that didn't happen in my home. It's a social skill that I didn't see practiced. Well, it's the same thing with kids. They are going to see a social skill practiced and they are going to implement it or copy it into their own world. Why we think that they have to learn their social skills from other kids on a playground, I have no idea. I think you absolutely have to let children play and be children with other children their age. Absolutely. I think social skills and social cues though come directly from your parents. So is my kid not going to be social? because he doesn't play with kids on an every single day basis? Absolutely not. He's gonna be social because of what I've taught him to do. And if he is shy or drawn back or things like that, it's because I have let him be shy and drawn back. I have to teach him that you have to be social. And especially living in the South, you know, we have had many a conversation, especially when he was very small, like five years old, I remember I worked part-time and I remember having a conversation that we have to go into my work and if, you know, Miss So-and-so says something to you, you absolutely have to speak back to her. If somebody, you know, says, hello, how are you, Ryan, even at six or five, I he was expected to say good, you know, he was expected to say something. and really teaching my child that 
you know, you being uncomfortable is not the most important thing. That you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. And yes, this is scary and very difficult, but this is how we have to socially behave. Um, I think when you when they play with children, they learn how to play and um, use their imaginations and they learn how to have fun and things like that. But I think if you're just talking to social cues and how are they going to interact with the daily world, that comes from your parenting and that comes from you. And there's a lot of things that I have just now learned that um, there's a lot of things that really living in the smaller town that I live in and having a lot of these deep-seated traditions have kind of brought out like I've had to explain to him that you have to talk to so-and-so and And if somebody says something to you you have to say this and if you order at a restaurant um, that's the other thing I always make him order at the restaurant but if you order at the restaurant you don't look at your menu You know, you put your menu down and you look at that person in the the eye and say this. And because um, we're teaching them to look somebody in the eye, it's not going to be so scary for them later on in life. Um, We actually would go swimming at somebody we know's pool. And I said, all right, I will take you swimming. That is no problem, but you better absolutely say yes ma'am and when we are done you have to go up to her and say thank you for letting me swim at your pool and you have to look her in the eye and I was so set on that that if that didn't happen I told him I would absolutely never bring him back again he would not be allowed and I think you have to teach a lot of socialization is proper manners, knowing what to say in the right situation, and even to this day, letting it be open. So if he's playing with his friends and he said, well, they said this to me and they said that to me, what do I say in this situation? Or how do I act in this situation? I think they're trying to figure out how to act with each other and how to act in conflict and things like that. And Not that he's never getting that because he is absolutely getting that. He's just not getting it from the stranger down the road. You know, he's getting his socialization in a supervised way with people I know. So we're getting it a lot at church. Um, We're getting it a lot with like families that we are friends with. And it's kind of this old school thinking that, you know, you want to have your community and I think as long as you build that where they are getting some kind of socialization that's like definitely supervised socialization so you know these people's children I don't think anybody can come to you and say it is wrong that you don't put your child in school and I'm I would absolutely fight tooth and nail to say why would my son need to go to school to learn a socialization skill from a child that I have no idea his background, where he came from, who his parents are, that's just absurd to me. Why would I allow this precious gift that I was given be taught by strangers how to live in life? No, that is absolutely my job. People always ask, especially like my mom has asked me this a ton of times, what are you going to do when you don't know a subject that he has to do? Like obviously... I'm not going to know trigonometry right off the bat. Not going to know it. But I will learn it with him or we will farm it out. Um, Back in the day, um, people had tutors. And this was, you know, a prevalent thing. And it was in, um, I guess, higher, higher society, I would assume. And I don't find it weird to say, okay, I'm going to find you a tutor or somebody that specializes in this to teach you this particular subject. And so I know that if something is too hard for me or I can't figure it out, that I do have the option to kind of farm this out to a source that I feel comfortable with, not a stranger or anything like that. Um, but somebody who I feel comfortable with. 
and who is going to teach them as well or better that I could than I could in this particular subject. So I don't think it's anything to be afraid of to start homeschooling your children and see the progression of like, well, maybe I'm not going to always know what to say or what to do or how to do this particular subject. I think that there's kind of ways around it. And we are actually reading Little Women in school. And um, I mean, Lori in Little Women, like he had a tutor, you know, and I don't think it's this far-fetched idea. I think we just look back and think that, oh, this must be strange or weird, but um, to farm out a subject when you're thinking in your homeschool budget probably isn't a big deal either. So, and that all those things can still be done in the convenience of my own home or in somewhere that I feel safe. Um, it can hopefully be done, you know, I know lots of people have family resources that they will say, well, my husband is better at this or my dad's better at this, he's gonna help me out with it. Um, I know per se that I don't have a lot of family around, but I do know that if I couldn't teach him something, I would fi absolutely find somebody who could. So my last thing is when. I was looking down my list, making sure I hit all my points, and I did forget this. Uh, when is a big deal, like when you homeschool, I think. And I really want to include this because I think everybody is different. And don't feel weird if you want to be different in this respect. I am definitely not an early morning girl, never have been, don't like it. I am more of a late night, late owl girl. Um, because I'm a writer and things like that, I think I just tend to get a lot more stuff done at night. You guys will notice I have a lot of times I'll be cleaning and it'll be really late at night. And so for our homeschool, it's not, you know, us getting up at six o'clock in the morning and starting homeschool at exactly eight o'clock and things like that. Um, most of the time I start homeschool between like nine and 10 and we homeschool between three to six hours. And this is only because sometimes my child lags. We could get it done in just a few hours, absolutely. Um, some days though, he has a hard time. It's just, it's just the season of life that I'm going through. And so I wanted to kind of give you that kind of answer. But honestly, you know, there have been seasons in life where we have homeschooled all afternoon. There have been seasons in life where we have started at 10 and been done by 12 or one. And that was just normal and we did that day in and day out. And I think you really have to decide what works best for you and your family. I know Jay Morrell Stewart um, will homeschool in the afternoon and that works best for her family. And it really gave me confidence to think that I didn't have to be homeschooling at 7 a.m all the time and I had friends that were you know they were done with their homeschool by 11 or something and I was like oh. but their kids got up at like 5 30 in the morning and I'm like oh thank you Jesus you didn't give me that you know that wouldn't work well for me so I think you have to work out whatever works best for you if you really want it to be done and out of the way then absolutely you have to start early but you know we just tend not to do that so we're pretty much like a 9 or 10 kind of family and um, we get up and kind of slow go we don't even get up and start right away so that's why it ends up being like 9 or 10 because you know it'll be like an hour or two before we will actually like okay let's start and it's mostly because I'm trying to get stuff done I'm trying to get some mom stuff done or I'm trying to upload YouTube videos or something like that. So I think you have to do what works best for you. So that is just what's working best in this season of my life. So hopefully that answers all your guys' questions and gives you some encouragement to either start homeschool or continue homeschool. Um, I am always open to any questions. Um, comment down below anything that you want. Um, to know about, I hit me up on Instagram too if there's anything 
um, question wise that I didn't cover that you think I should cover and um, really even if it's controversial I feel like there's always a voice in everything and if you really have like a but what about this um, you know obviously like let's talk about it let's hash it out and um, see what kind of thing we can get to obviously these are just my opinions and your opinion could absolutely be different than my opinion so i just ask that we you know respect each other and respect each other's opinions but i hope this does help and encourage um, anybody who is looking to homeschool has been homeschooling or just needed kind of like a little pick me up for the day i will see you guys in my next brand new video don't forget to like comment and subscribe bye for now